You know what, Chad? One reason you have trouble, I think. More than trouble. <laughs> I'm still well, don't it's because you, this. you're not the only person who is a person of pattern and habit. We all are. Come in. Pattern rules the brain. Here's another story. This is again from Joan Alera, but this one is about a woman, mm -hmm. I believe her name is Anne. I'm Ann Consaver. I live in a small country town where most people know other people. Anne was a high school English teacher. I taught for 31 years. She now lives in West Virginia. Wait, this, can you wait this minute? There's someone at my door. I'm sorry. There's, no, no, never... of course. Of course. Anne was an upstanding citizen, went to church every Sunday, <laughs> was just one of those people who... Makes the world go round. Makes the world go round. I'm sorry. Not at all. Anyway, in 1991, I would go to the grocery store and on the occasions I wrote a check for my groceries, the woman would say, gosh, you're shaky. And she says she began to notice that her hands would start to tremble. Are you all right? But I just thought maybe it was because of working that hard and trying to get everything done. And, and it got particularly bad when she said she was just walking in the mall doing some shopping. And I was by myself walking. And it was like I stepped off a step that wasn't there. It was the first full body tremor. She fell. And then my husband was a doctor, and he sent me to a neurologist who diagnosed me with Parkinson's. Well, how, how old is she, by the way? She was at that point in her early 50s. What is Parkinson's? Parkinson's is the death of dopamine neurons in the back of your brain, in the part of your brain that controls bodily movement. And so when these neurons die, the end result is first the shaking hand and the loss of feeling and the loss of movement. And then, of course, the tremors get worse and worse. But anyway... Well, the doctor diagnosed with Parkinson's, and he gives her a drug called Requip. Requip was... Uh New medicine in 1992. It's a pseudo-dopamine. It basically mimics dopamine in the synapse of the cells. And it was like a miracle drug for me. Her tremors disappear, her symptoms disappear. So she's cured, or...? Uh, if you looked at her on Requip, years after she had Parkinson's, you wouldn't notice anything. She would seem symptom-free. So about seven or eight years go by, all the while they're upping the doses to compensate for the cell loss that's still taking place. And in the early years of 2000, something sort of unusual happened to Anne. Some friends of mine had gone to Las Vegas every year for the basketball tournament, the Final Four type thing. And um, they asked would I like to go with them. And I said, yes, I would. So she went to watch basketball, but as often happens in Vegas, one afternoon she and her friends found themselves in a casino. Had you ever gambled before this trip to Las Vegas? No, I was raised in a household that was fairly religious, and we considered gambling a sin. But as she stood there in the casino in Vegas, she had this inexplicable urge to go to the slot machines. They had frogs and princes and cars and cherries and lemon push a button we'll spin and see what the pictures did i've never taken any drugs so i don't know anything to compare it to but it was like a high that was sort of the beginning of it um and then and then when she comes back to west virginia i couldn't wait to get to a machine i really wanted to play she discovers the dog racing track it's a good spot to pull in about 15 miles away from her house. I'd go at 7.30, be there when they opened. And that's, and that's where she would go, and they had a wide assortment of slot machines. Hi, how are you? If I had the money, I'd play all day. From 7 to 3.30 in the morning. Whoa. Um, and then she would go home and play slots. On the computer. On her computer, um, not even for money. Just for the sheer visceral thrill. I would play that the rest of the night. 7.30 the next morning, I'd be back at the joint. Hi, how are you? Without any sleep at all? No sleep, and she could keep that up for several days in a row. At the beginning of my gambling, I'd wake up in the night and just scream out, Oh, God, what am I doing? Help me, save me. 
But eventually I became too hard-hearted, I guess, to even pay attention to that. Her credit cards are all maxed out. I sold my mother's silver. I sold my silverware. Things that should have been my son's heirlooms stole from the safety deposit box. She steals quarters from her grandkids. Steals quarters from her grandkids? Yeah. Anything I looked at around the house, I thought I could get money out of. Everyone who knows her is watching her life fall apart. My house was filthy, dirty, a mess. I wouldn't take time to even wash dishes. She lives on peanut butter. Didn't have any crackers or bread or anything. I just had peanut butter. Um, because that's all she can afford and still leave as much money as possible for the slots. Even when I'd be at church, I'd think, well, so many more minutes or so many more hours I can go gamble. Her husband eventually leaves her. I mean, I loved my husband, but... They got divorced. There's just no decision. Everything is gambling. One of the neat things about gambling is you can do it by yourself. How much money did you lose during those years, if if you don't mind me asking? I lost at least $300,000. $300,000. Wow. Which to her is? Is all her life savings. And it's one quarter at a time. Yeah, that's the surreal part. I tried several things. I went to a rehab facility. I, my father, I told you, I was raised in a really religious home. Sometimes I would say my dad's watching me from heaven and he, he wouldn't approve of this. He wouldn't be so disappointed in me. But seemingly I just couldn't. Stop. Let me pause here for a second, Jad. Uh, I want to just take a moment to try to figure out what exactly 